Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special episode of Tales from the Fandom. I am joined by someone who I cannot even imagine I'm getting to talk to because I didn't even know. Like when I got the information, I was like, oh, I'm going to record with a Sumali. I was like, wait a second. Let me like, you know, let me check, check the credits and everything. I was like, I know her work. I didn't Yay! know I knew your work, <laughs> but I know her work. I so, love that. I love that surprise. <laughs> so I have uh, Sumali Montano here uh, on the podcast slash video podcast because we're going to have it for everywhere. Sumali, how are you doing today? I'm good. It's we were just saying it's right before the holidays and I'm just um, wrapping up. I'm ready. I'm ready for vacation. <laughs> I know every everyone's like even even my work right now is like everyone's just waiting waiting until like noon, waiting till five for whenever they start like going and doing stuff. I've got like, I've already hit the grocery store three times in the past two (laughs) days and I've got to go at least once more today. So I'm so glad ours is close by to me because I know we're, yeah, we're going to be doing the same thing. Like, oh, we forgot this. Oh, let's go get that. (laughs) Absolutely. Now you are here because you have, you not only did you act in the movie, but you came up with the concept for the movie you uh, like you you wrote the movie like I didn't write it I didn't write it I did create or produce it with okay. our writer but I didn't write it but thank but, you but you you like everything with uh the deal which is on Roku the streaming platform if you're interested in it uh I got to watch it I came up with a lot of questions I, I will say um, we're going to talk about this, but we I also like to talk about some of the fandom stuff that you've done oh, as yeah. well, because this we is Tales from the Fandom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I, I want to make sure we get the 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 deal stuff taken care of. But this was um, I, I do want to ask because I know you you came up with the the idea. Where did you come up with it? Like when you were walking, like in the shower, like <laughs> on a car ride, like where where did you like where did it pop up into your head of? this is what I want to do. I, I had always, um, I had actually always had this idea of the basic structure uh, and storyline of this, of the, of the movie. And it was just tucked way back in the back of my head. And I, um, I never really brought it out. And it took uh, another friend of mine from a previous life before I became an actor he we we had dinner he he came into he flew to LA and he was just talking to me about my about the business and uh he was like you know maybe maybe I can help you make a movie <laughs> I was like really <laughs> uh, 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 are you serious and by the end of dinner I realized he was serious and um so he said why don't you why don't you come up and um pitch some movie ideas to my friends and me <laughs> I was like, really? I was still like shocked. And that bit of permission or invitation to do that was what unlocked that idea. Because immediately I like called up my friends. I was like, oh my gosh, guys, I got a chance to pitch some <laughs> some um, uh, I, movie ideas to people who might want to make some movies with us. And I, 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 I solicited scripts and I read scripts. Little did I know this was the beginning of my producing career. I didn't, I, 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 I it was just a, dinner with a friend and so I solicited scripts I read them and I picked kind of the two that I felt were the ones that resonated with me that I thought would be the strongest and then in the back of my mind I was like wait I kind of have this other idea too and um and that I think because it came from my mother and me like it's really based on my real life relationship with my mom we just said it in the sci-fi world I think that one was the one that when I when I pitched it, when I presented it, it was the most connected. And mm-hmm. so they reacted to it and everybody at the table started talking about it. And they're like, oh, what if what if we did this or what if we did this? And that's always a good sign when you're pitching something <laughs> that everybody at the table is like, you know, their their ideas start flowing. And um, yeah, so it was I don't know. It was just it was there and it took I think it just it took the invitation from someone else to bring it to the poor. And then I developed it further. And then of course we hired a writer, Sean Prezant. And um, he he was great because he actually knew my mom and he and I had known each other since college. And so I was like, this is our story. 
this is what I want it to, you know, this is, this is where I want to start. This is where I want to end. These are the challenges that I want to meet in the middle. And, uh, and then he was able to turn it into a beautiful screenplay. Oh, that's awesome. I, and I, I like, I totally understand, you know, when, when you're look, like you have the, 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 you have the looking at the scripts and, but then you have something that is so attached to you. So personal to you that, you know, that like clearly winner of, you know, getting, the the most passion out of it is the things that you would like to do and the things that you want to share, not only with others, but with, you know, with everybody that gets to be a part of it. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I should say too, that um, the idea at first was with two people. I wasn't sure who the two people would be like our two protagonists. And then as I was talking about, you know, you know, when you have an idea, you know, I kind of vet it and I will talk about it to certain friends and see how they react. And, um, and then I, I I was talking to one friend who was quite close to me, and my mother had just passed away. Uh, actually, not just, but um, he knew, and he was like, you, you know, he he liked the basic idea of the story, and he was the one who said, who kind of put the idea in my head, like, well, you've been talking so much about your mom, like, why not you and your mom? And then everything everything just fell into place because I was like oh wait oh my gosh yeah and then this like I I thought back about instances and experiences that my mom and I had had that just slotted in so perfectly and then it was like oh my gosh this must be kind of meant to be because she made so many sacrifices for me in her life uh things that I didn't even realize Mm -hmm. while she was alive I only realized the extent of her sacrifices after she died and um and so i had to i had to do something to honor how much she loved me and i was just i'm still just so tickled to pieces that we made a movie i'm literally like mom we made a movie about you and me (laughs) and and it's clear like it, it definitely translates in the movie like there's the scene where um, your character uh, Tala is counting counting out everything from the like the the coffee can or the, the the tin can, and it's something that like when I saw that like I remember when like my when my grandfather passed and like we're going through his stuff and again cans like not not anything but like boxes or proper files but just like all sorts of stuff was just tucked away yes. and. That's it's, how my mom was. And it's like, like I, I, you know, that generation, I think it's just how they did it. And it, I like, I remember my mom and um, my grandmother having to like sort through that because my grandmother didn't know either until he had passed. And it's like finding oh all these different things. Oh my God. So uh, I'll tell you like a little weird, I don't know, this, this is what reminds me of your story. Um, after my mom passed away, uh, you know, she, she did the things like Tala did in the movie like I mean she would she would walk through with me like where certain savings that she had squirreled away where they were hidden or what bank accounts they were at and you know where to find this or where to find that and we had that conversation several times but I also knew that she probably just hid stuff <laughs> you know like that's because that's how she was and um after she passed away my first time going going into her bedroom it was the weirdest experience. I I walked into the bedroom and it was like my attention just went and like honed in on a little tiny like pencil holder, like a pencil case or pen case that was on the bedside table that was like on one of the shelves on the bedside table. I opened it up and sure enough, there was like another, another little stash of savings that she had put away there and hidden it there. So it was really, I'm so thrilled about how much, um, how much of my real life with her ended up on screen. It's one of the questions I had because, um, and I was reading over the information and, um, you know, for, for the press kit and everything, Um, you know, after you created it, and you were, you know, working on the script and the characters. And it, it said that you had removed yourself from the vision of of playing as Tala. Um, yeah. so, you, so you could, like, critically, like, make sure that the character was the character and not, like, put, like, self-inserting. But then you got the role. Like, 
what what was what was that like i guess to like have worked on it from like the two different sides of you know the the personal relationship you have with the character but then separating yourself from that character but then full circle yeah now, coming now back you have to it, that role that's that's a great question because you know what what drove me initially to to tell the story was i wanted to honor my mom and you know, found a writer who, you know, was a friend and we started developing the script together. And um, it was just, it was weird when I would, um, of course, in my mind, because I'm an actor, I thought that I would, I hoped that I would get to play Tala. But I, I would sit in these work sessions with our writer, Sean Prezant, and it was so weird when I, when I pictured myself in that role, because when I when I when I had to have a work session or when I give notes, I visually see the picture. You know, I see the movie in my mind, and when I saw myself in it, it, it just I don't know. It 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 froze up the the producer the the ability for the producer to give notes proper notes on a script, mm -hmm. and I don't I don't know how to explain it, but I just know I my notes sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, I was like I was I was either too maybe not too invested is the right word, but I couldn't, um, it, like as an actor too, like you don't, you don't want to be watching yourself when you're acting. Like it, it, it kind of, you know, you want to be in the moment. And so I couldn't be in the moment giving notes on the picture that I saw in my head because seeing me was stopping it. So I realized pretty quickly, thank goodness, if I didn't picture myself in the role, my notes got better. You know, and then I, I, I could, I could comment more um, uh, objectively, and I like, and Sean even was like, "Oh yeah, th this is working much better now." <laughs> like, um, so we had a great. I mean, we had a really great work process. Um, the synergy between us was wonderful, and he he always made sure that my mother was our north star in the in the whole development process, which was great. And so I I trusted that he could do that. I don't, I, I was doing that as well, but I didn't need to see myself as her in it. And then we, you know, the taking, it took maybe a year and a half to develop the script. So I was so used to by then, like, I'm not Tala. I'm like, I'm a producer. I'm, right. I'm a creative producer on this. And, you know, that, that in and of itself takes a lot of focus. And then I real, you know, getting the script ready to take out two people to make it with us. Um, you know, and of course we went to, we went to Electric Entertainment first, um, Lisa Brenner and Dean Devlin. And um, I was so fortunate that after they read the script, they were on board. Like they, they you know, very, fairly quickly. It wasn't, um, it, it didn't take, a, it didn't take a lot, which was a, another really good sign. And, and I pitched I, I I pitched a bunch of other actors to play the character that's based on my mom. I had just kind of, the one thing that I asked was I would like this actress to be a woman of color because my mom mm -hmm. is a woman of color. So I was like, please, you know, let's, let's cast this as a woman of color. And then I don't know, it wasn't even a week, maybe a few days later, Dean came back to me and said, you know what? Why don't you play this character? you know your mom better than anyone. You spent a year and a half, two years with this script. You know you know it inside and out. You just play her. And I was like, really? <laughs> and, then, and then my mind got to go all the way back to the very beginning where I was like, oh, I think this idea could, could really work. And I, could, I might be able to play, I might be able to act in it too. So yeah, no, it was, it was, it was really Dean and Lisa who came back and and gave me the opportunity and it didn't obviously didn't have to twist my arm too hard <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned you know producing the movie mm -hmm. um and being a producer can mean a number of different things yes. like you, you google what a you producer does and ev it's basically anything and everything what were what were some of your roles as a producer for the deal uh i will say that my well, my biggest role was kind of conceiving of the the concept. Um, I'd say I also I also pulled the team the the kind of like core team together because uh, I'd gone to college with the writer. You know, he's a friend. Um, uh, thankfully, I had a relationship with Dean and Lisa. Kind of brought them, you know, them in. Um, I was able to, 
raise the financing um, and bring in uh, bring in the financier. So uh, it was it was a lot of um, the I guess the pre all the pre stuff before filming. Okay. Once we got to filming, um, I was aware because I had, I had been there for pre production, but this was the first film that I produced. So uh, thankfully, I had like veteran. <laughs> Dean and Lisa and the, their team in Serbia was amazing. So they, you know, I could really l like trust that they had that part so that I could focus on acting. And Lisa and Dean were very wonderful and they're very supportive. And they said, look, when you're acting, we just need you to act. You have to take off your producer hat. <laughs> and so I, it was a little scary because I was so used to like being so involved in every detail. But then, of course, I love acting and that's that's really, you know, my passion and what I'm most experienced at. So uh, during production, I was able to dive into just being an actor. And then I was able to kind of like put my producer hat back on uh, afterwards during post. But yeah, they they hid a bunch of stuff from me. Like while we were, <laughs> <laughs> like, because like, if I had had both hats on, I don't know that I would have been able to focus. It's a lot to, this was my first time carrying, like, a you know, being one of the leads in a movie too. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot producing is a lot i think i could not have done both during that you know i think we our our shooting schedule we shot for 30 days so it was a it was a healthy a good schedule when when you shot the film it, and i believe and correct me if i'm wrong it shot 2019 right yes and then we it, were, oh, this is all pre-pandemic we had right. no idea what was coming down the path and <laughs> so so you had you shot the film and then COVID yeah. and how, like, did, did you like have any concern? Like, you know, this, this movie has a lot of stuff like that starts. It, I'm not going to say it started playing out, but there's, there's definitely a lot of themes where it's like, you, if you think ahead, like, Oh yeah. Certain things could, could potentially feasibly go down that path. Like any concerns, anything like Oh gosh, like now what are we going to do with this? Oh, that kind of concern. No. Um I never had that concern. My concern was I I would see headlines and I still see headlines um that mimic the world, the the very cruel and callous world that we built in the deal. And um you know, it's that that's that that was my concern. It was literally you know, we had kind of a our our bad joke in in post was like we gotta get this movie out before it becomes a documentary. <laughs> like that I mean that that part, but I think it was just really more um maybe that's the concern that you were referring to. But uh for me it was really just more the heartfelt concern of, oh gosh, I I really hope that society doesn't, you know, travel down this path. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, we were very, we were really fortunate that, um, we needed to do a, a, we needed to reshoot a couple scenes and Dean really led the push. It's like, I want to get this done before the holidays. I want to get this done before 2020. Let's get it done. We reshot a couple of scenes in 20 December, 2019. And it was like, if we hadn't done that. Right. I don't know that we'd have our movie, you know? So that was, um, yeah, I, a couple of people have said it's, you know, um, prescient, is that the right word? Is that, am I, am I saying that word right? Um, but it, it really, it predicted a lot of things that um, just, I, I never would have dreamed that uh, would happen, mm -hmm. sadly. Yeah, under understandable. Uh, cause you know, there, there's been another, uh, a couple of movies either like similarly shot, like right around the 2019 or 2020 where there's like, I can't believe like everything is lining up so eerily on, on some of the movies. And I'm like, I don't, how, like, I understand, like, I understand like pandemics have always been a thing, but to have like so many movies and so many storytellers sync up or line up and then kind of like not comes to fruition but there's so many key moments where it's like i could see that i relate to that yeah. it, it boggles the mind 
Yeah, it really, um, yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I'm, I, I think now I think about the movie and I'm so glad that in a way it's a, it's post pandemic, you know, it's, it's what it's, it presents to us the choice of what are we going to do when we're through this? And if there's an, if there's a worse virus, because in our case, the virus killed humans, animals, and crops. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, what, what are we going to do after that? And uh, I, I think that's why one of the reasons I love sci-fi, because it gets to present, um, you know, situations like that. And you see how our main characters kind of deal with that situation. And um, hopefully we'll give a lot of, give, give people a lot to think about. And I don't want to live in a world where the the policies and the and the and the government provides no um no compassion no support and and that's one of the things you know when you're watching the movie like obviously the question that pops up is would you take the deal and i'm yeah. i'm sitting here thinking right and i'm i'm watching i'm like okay 20 years food medicine right. job everything but you watch it your your apartment's not that great i don't know about the job the food doesn't look that good either. <laughs> and I'm like the medical care, you're still getting the six months, like six months, seven months for, for a procedure. They can't fit you in. I'm like, I don't know if I'd take that deal because that definitely is, is not like it. Maybe if I was on that flip side with the nice house and the long, you know, 20 years. Exactly. With, with exactly. Some, with the rich enclave, stuff. the rich yeah. enclave people, they, <laughs> they're shielded from the deal. They don't have to take it. But if you got that life, yeah, like I was like, I don't know if I if I'd go with that deal. It doesn't seem, you know, I maybe I'd rather scrape by and and do my own thing versus uh taking that twenty years and then okay, bye. I'm so glad you said that because um it's that's great because that's where we that's really what we were intending uh to kind of make it make people just you know think about whether they would or not and and have the story be told at a time when some people were were choosing to take it and still many people were choosing not to take it and they're 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 trying to survive and fight back and not have to take this horrible deal and i like uh, to me you know when we when i first envisioned it uh i was thinking the timeline was further on and that our protagonists would be the only ones who hadn't taken the deal and they were the they were the renegades they were the holdouts and mm -hmm. um you know, I'm working with, you know, this is why it's a, it's a collaboration and, you know, working with, working with Dean and Lisa, uh, Dean was real, the one who's really like, no, 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 let's, let's push the time frame earlier. So we're at a more interest to me, more interesting point where some people have taken it and some people haven't. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a little bit, I think also more realistic for our characters to, you know, some have and some haven't. And it's, a uh, more realistic than having like oh how convenient your main characters are the only ones who didn't take the deal <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's definitely like that that um the one that the where it sticks out the most is that food line where you're going to pick up the food everyone else is waiting for the food and i'm like if that's the food i don't right. know if the deal's worth it like you know i i like my food but <laughs> I don't know if I could just deal with what what they what they uh, are are passing out at the counter. <laughs> that didn't look like a delicious piece of, piece of meat. <laughs> no, not not so much. Now, what was it like when the movie came out? Like when it actually released? Like what 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 was your your feeling? Because now you you've started from the concept through everything, and then it finally it's out, and that's it. Yeah, like, it's a, I'm going to, I'm stealing a word that um, one of the Twitter reviews used like when I, that I saw, transcendent. It really was such a transcendent feeling because, you know, as an artist, as an actor, I understand, you know, being a part of something and letting it be out there and letting people comment and, you know, it, it, it it's no longer yours. It's, it's out there now. It, it takes a life of its own. Um and the same thing, I I felt the same thing for the deal, but it just had that really extra layer of doing something for someone I loved, and 
uh, I, not past tense. I, I I still love my mom, but um, I mean, I think that's really the the theme of the movie is, you know, you've got a mother and daughter who have this mutual desperation to protect each other at all costs, and to me in real life, you know, this movie was me doing everything I could to 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 care for my mom. Mm -hmm. So when I saw, for me, like I'd seen mul multiple cuts of the movie, of, of course. And so that was, it was cool to just sit in my living room and watch it on TV. It was like, you know, we, we got Roku because so that we could, you know, so they could watch it, but you don't, you don't actually have to have Roku. You could just stream it online. You could just go to the Roku channel.com and uh, watch it. But for me, it was when the, the dedication at the end came mm -hmm. up. And of course, I'm one, I'm one of the people who sits through all the credits. And so like <laughs> we have we have an initial dedication right after the movie ends. But then we have like the um, kind of longer dedication uh, at the end. And when that scrolled by. That was just everything. It was like it gave me a it gave me a sense of closure that um, I hadn't fully expected uh, the depth of that and. Yeah, I mean, it's just knowing some somebody who sacrificed so much for you, being able to being able to do something for them. Now, with with media as it is today, and so many again, you know, you have the Roku streaming channel platform, and then all, all the other ones that are out there as well. Would you ever like to see the world that you have created expanded on, like? in a tv show oh hell yeah to... yeah that's exactly <laughs> that's totally if if i could do my if i could have my like my next dream job this was already a dream project <laughs> but um so i i consider myself like i already won the lottery like i got to i got to conceive a movie i got to make it i got to start it i guess you know it's out there but absolutely i would love to see this turn into a tv series and i think you know when you watch it you, you see at the end like it, it kind of like is a perfect layup mm -hmm. for it <laughs> so um yeah i would love that and yeah, then like... I, I would like to like exec produce something like that mm -hmm. and i'll just be i don't need to i don't need to start it i'll just need to like i'll be like a guest star and pop in every few a few episodes <laughs> and, and that that was the thing that popped into my head is that you follow the trio of uh the younger generation emma and the, the her two friends um and follow them to see because there's so much depth in you yes. get you get like breadcrumbs of like what's going on outside what's yes. going on inside like it makes you want to like get to know all of the characters want to know where they're going and spend, and spend more time with them oh you just gave me the chills i'm so so happy that you felt that way because that's how i feel i'm like i want to know i want to know what happens next yeah absolutely now you you've done and i said at the beginning you, you've done a lot of work and your imdb page of course you know there there's a lot of stuff and as somebody who does a, a podcast about fandom you you hit a number a number of different things where i was like i i can't imagine you are like in so many different worlds like and just for people who have not checked out your IMDb page, uh, Critical Role, Dragon Age, Star Wars, Star Trek, Mass Effect, Transformers, Batman, Voltron, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, World of Warcraft, Diablo, Kung Fu, Panda. What is it like being in so many different fandoms? Like you, you could go to a convention feasibly, and I, I don't know what they would where where they would slot you as far as like building which fandom you're representing because you've done so much work. You're so kind. And I am extremely grateful that uh, I get to play in all these fandoms. I, I never, I never would have imagined it in a million years. Star Wars was the first movie I ever saw <laughs> when I was a kid. And I mean, if you had told me then that, you know, X number of years later that you'd be, you know, voicing characters in the Star Wars universe in an animated, you know, in an animated series. You know, who knew? Um, but I forgot your question, but I'm so I'm so well, grateful that I I can play in so many fandoms. Well, I, I mean, like, what what's it like being a part of it? Because you have like, especially online, you know, you you 
And one of the hottest things that's been out recently, you know, Critical Role, you've been a part of Critical Role, uh, video game Ghost of Tsushima, um, it's just the the new Dragon Age show that's coming out. Like, like what what is it like having so much cross intersection? Like you you have like <laughs> people from all over are are getting to experience your work. Um, it's thank you, thank you again. Uh, I I love it because though the first thing that goes to mind is kind of funny because when I meet somebody, you know, or they, you know, they'll ask what I, you know, what do you what do you do, and we'll start talking, and then. Um, what I love about having multiple fandoms is that if, if I if I'm gonna choose to like engage in a longer conversation, eventually we'll hit on something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hit on something that they're into. <laughs> um, especially you know if the lately because I think because of Ghost of Tsushima, uh, if I if I ask if they're a gamer, you know, almost everybody's heard of it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'd say I'd say Critical Role and Ghost recently and well and like you said now dragon age since um lots of stuff is coming out but it, it's wonderful it's a chance to connect with people and it gives people it gives you know it gives us a chance to connect on something that we both love you know when i'm talking with someone so i it's a wonderful thing you know just i feel like that's kind of the whole concept of fandom we you know, it's it's a community, and all of a sudden you realize, ah, you're part of that community. Ah, oh, so am I. Awesome! And then you can kind of just skip a bunch of stuff, and then uh, and connect deeper. When uh, when I knew that I was going to get to to record with you, I had followed you on on Twitter and Instagram. And one of the things that I loved is that th even though your your role with Critical Role was like a guest appearance for a, a couple of episodes, I love that like you're still like talking about posting about like Dungeons and Dragons, like on your stories. Okay. And I was like, I was like, oh, dang, like, you know, you, you, you got into it. Like, it's something that, you know. Oh my gosh. Yes. I love, I love Dungeons and Dragons. And, and you know, um, that was the first time that I had like legit played Dungeons and Dragons when I went on Critical Role. So I prepared for that session, those couple guest star sessions. I prepared for that so much because I, I I got to sit down with Matt. He helped me create my character, and and then I was like, I can't go on Critical Role for the first time and not like. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm already such a noob, right? Um, but I spent hours kind of reading and talking, and then I I I um uh shout out to Tom Lommel, a friend of mine who I sat down with, and he kind of like walked me through what was gonna happen, and I was like, okay, okay, I think I got all this, but I spent so much time prepping it and then I had so much fun playing it and then the critical role fandom embraced me so so beautifully and so lovingly that I was like how do you not like fall in love with D&D &D after that and so my I got my my husband my, actually my husband had done had played a little bit uh, when he was younger, but mm -hmm. kind of like reignited his interest and then got my kid into it. So now we have like family D and D and I mean, I, I just, I didn't know what a cool, what a cool imaginative play space it was. And I tell, I tell like parents that I meet now, if they're not sure about like what it is or what, what to get their kids into, I'm like, Oh my God, it's gotta be D and D because <laughs> D and D helps your kid. Like it helps them with math. It helps them with, you know, storytelling. It helps mm -hmm. them with public speaking. And it was Liam who actually, you know, kind of spelled it all out. Like it's a great development, like developmental game for kids. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, you're right. So I'm, I'm like hook, line and sinker. I love, I love D and D. And that's so awesome. It's one of the things whenever they do um, like with toy drives, because we're recording yeah. this before Christmas, the starter sets are so cheap or they go on sale. Like I love to donate those to those toy drives yeah. because it's something where even that's if somebody picks idea. it up, you know, it has the dice. It's got the story, yeah. you know, the book it's got or, you know, the the smaller book for the, the, the play set. And it's like it, it I, I would hope that whoever picked it up, you know, Oh my gosh! In, no, in need like it's a great it's a great thing for them. I love that idea. Thank you for sharing it with me. I'm going to start doing that because it the possibilities are endless, and it it provides hours and hours and hours of entertainment. We still, you know, I'm not I'm not doing we're not doing a regular weekly game right now, but um, we just took a little bit of a break. But when we were, 
I mean, we may play for two, three hours, but the goodness lasts throughout the week. Because, you know, we're always like, oh, yeah, I remember when your character did that. Oh, I loved it when you did that. And it's it's um, it's wonderful. It I'm is. so I'm so grateful to Critical Role uh, from specifically for Matt, who, we you know, we ran into each other at a voiceover session and I was just congratulating him on how much success he'd had with Critical Role. And then all of a sudden he was like, why didn't you come on the show? I was like, oh, what? No, no, no. I, I don't know anything about D&D. And he was like, that's cool. That's what we want. I'm like, what? <laughs> and, and you got beautiful fan art from it. Because I was looking at the fan art oh. last week and I was like, you know, I, it's always amazing to just see like art regardless, but then just to see like people that create it based on the characters that they're getting to see and hear. Oh. Beautiful work. It's it, it it is so brilliant. Um, I I was just blown away, you know, and how quickly, how quickly it's developed too. Like you know, after that first appearance of Neela, my character was just like so much art came out. It was so good, and it, for an actor, it's just it's so humbling that somebody, you know, I have a I have an image in my head, but people take it and build on it and it's even more you know it's like the whole yes and thing of mm -hmm. you know, creating something yeah and then what if we did this and yeah what if we did this and yeah it made me cry seeing all the fan art and and to see how much also the the critical role cast like they react they they react to it the same way also you know now you, you've done so much and you know again so many different fandoms out there is there something that you've wanted to be in or that you're like you know what i would love to oh. be lord of the rings game of thrones <laughs> you know so you know what 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 is what is something that you haven't tackled or haven't had the chance to, but you're like you know what dang it i would i i want to be on that that series or that show or be a part of this world that's a good question. I thought you were going to ask uh, what's what's been your favorite one. And I was like, oh, I. I oh, no, you, know, you can't. I know? can't ask you yeah. to okay, choose good, that. Good. Yeah, no, I was I was no. glad that it was going someplace else. But I'm like, oh, this is a good one to think about. Um, well, you mentioned Lord of the Rings and uh, I'm a huge fan. So that I, I don't I, mean, I it's it's interesting because I, I do a lot of work in like that fantasy space, you know, with various video games and uh you know, Dragon Age. So I don't, it's, it's interesting. I don't, I feel like I, I play in that world, but just not specifically Lord of the Rings, but mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to go with that. I'm trying to think already of like, Ooh, what would I like to be in Lord of the Rings? <laughs> um, wow. I, I think I want to be a dwarf. <laughs> be an awesome, an awesome dwarf. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll say Lord of the Rings. And then like we said before, it would be great to it would be great to come up with um come up with a, an idea, IP like the deal that then became its own, mm -hmm. its own. That's awesome. Well, for for people that have watched or listened and they want to follow you or check out your work. Um, obviously, checking out your work is a little bit harder, but they they're gonna have to go track it down as far as you know the the different shows and and a uh, series that you've been on. But where where can they find you uh, to to follow you and, and see what you're doing next? Uh, I'm I think I'm the uh, on every place is sumali dot com s u m a l e e d o t c o m. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to merge after the Twitter ship <laughs> dies, but um, right now you can find me on Instagram and, uh, you know, and always, I it's, it needs to be updated, but my website is sumale.com and that's really easy. So you can, it'll always have links to wherever, whatever socials I'm on. Awesome. And I'll make sure that I have the links, uh, not only to the deal, but to all of your socials uh, oh, in the okay. show notes and on YouTube. So that way anybody that's listening or watching can click on it. And Sumali, I want to say thank you because you unknowingly to me have been part of uh, a number of things that I have enjoyed with either by myself or with my kids, uh, specifically like Voltron um, and a, a number of different characters that I enjoy immensely and I just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to to come hang out with me and talk about 
the deal and and you know your your fandom and stuff that you're into it's my it's my pleasure it's a uh, it's it's really you you've touched me too in terms of how um how much you connected to all the different um projects that i you know fandoms that i get to be a part of and i appreciate your your support 